There's a lot of ways that the food you serve can become unsafe to eat. This happens by way of contamination, and there are three kinds of contaminants. Microbial pathogens, chemical contaminants, and physical contaminants. Let's start with microbial pathogens. Microorganisms are tiny living organisms that cannot be seen with the naked eye. And when one of those microscopic organisms is deemed dangerous to a person's health, they're called pathogens. Ready-to-eat foods, or foods that can be eaten without further preparation, are particularly vulnerable to microbial pathogens. The most common pathogens that can contaminate foods fall into one of two categories, viruses and bacteria. Viruses are tough to control because heating, cooking, or freezing can't destroy them. Although viruses don't multiply in food, if a customer eats food that has been contaminated with a virus, the virus can multiply rapidly in the body and make them sick. Nobody wants that to happen. Viruses are usually transmitted to food by a food handler who has the virus. They are often associated with ready-to-eat foods. Chances are many of the products in your department are ready to eat. To minimize the risk of viral pathogens affecting your products, keep food handlers who may have a viral infection away from your store. Like far, far away. Symptoms include vomiting, diarrhea, or jaundice. Also, make sure you and your coworkers practice good hand washing techniques and minimize bare hand contact with food. Two foodborne illnesses caused by viruses are hepatitis A and neurovirus gastroenteritis. Both are commonly linked to ready-to-eat foods, and both are dangerous for you and your customers. Bacteria cause many different foodborne illnesses. The rate at which they multiply makes them tricky to control. Bacteria can multiply from a safe level in a food to causing a foodborne illness in a matter of hours. Luckily, many bacteria are destroyed by cooking foods to the proper internal temperature and can be controlled by holding products at the proper temperature. To minimize the risk of bacteria causing an illness, manage time and temperature controls, prevent cross-contamination, you'll learn more about these later, and practice good personal hygiene. A few of the common foodborne illnesses caused by bacteria are listeriosis, hemorrhagic colitis, otherwise known as E. coli, and salmonellosis. They're each as bad as their funky name suggests. Another way that foods can become tainted in your department is through chemical contamination. Chemical contamination occurs when cleaning chemicals get into food or if acidic food is prepared or stored in containers made of a toxic metal like lead, copper, or zinc. To minimize the risk of chemical contamination in your department, always store cleaning supplies and chemicals away from food and food prep equipment, and use caution when using chemicals near food or food prep areas to avoid contaminating food or work surfaces. As always, Follow the manufacturer's instructions when using chemicals. Clearly label all chemicals and use only food safe pans, containers, and utensils when preparing and storing food. Physical contaminants are another potential hazard. Physical contaminants include naturally occurring items like olive pits and fish bones, as well as pieces of jewelry, staples from shipping cartons, metal shavings from cans, hair, and bandages. Pretty much anything that doesn't belong in someone's food ever. Be aware of physical contaminants when opening and preparing products. Wear hair restraints and leave your jewelry at home. Now that you're a bit more familiar with some pathogens, it's time to learn how to control them and keep the food you serve safe. Protecting food from coming in contact with physical and chemical pathogens is a good start. Clearly, it's tough to keep an eye on something that's microscopic, but holding pathogens at bay is all about controlling cooking times and temperatures, proper cooling, and minimizing cross-contamination. Just because you can't see the germs doesn't mean you can't take the simple steps necessary to kill them off. If you understand the conditions under which microbial pathogens thrive, you can control their growth by managing those conditions. Just remember the acronym FATTOM. F is for food. Pathogens need a source of food, especially proteins or carbohydrates, which are readily available in many of the foods you serve. A is for acidity. Pathogens grow best in foods with low acidity. Ingredients like lemon or tomato can make the food too acidic for rapid growth of pathogens. T is for time. Pathogens need time to grow. A single bacterium can multiply to over 1 billion bacteria in just 10 hours. Yep, 
nine zeros. That's one billion with a B. T is for temperature. Pathogens grow best between 41 degrees Fahrenheit and 135 degrees Fahrenheit. This is known as the danger zone. O is for oxygen. Like us, some pathogens need oxygen. M is for moisture. Pathogens need moisture to grow. In most cases, your primary methods of controlling the growth of pathogens will be time and temperature. Foods most likely to become unsafe are known as TCS foods, or time and temperature controlled for safety foods. Another name used to describe these foods is potentially hazardous foods. TCS foods are foods in which the fat tom conditions are most favorable for the growth of pathogens. These foods require diligence to keep safe. Some examples of TCS foods are cheese, milk and other dairy products, beef, pork, lamb, poultry, baked potatoes, tofu or other soy proteins, sliced melons, cut tomatoes, sprouts, cooked vegetables, rice or beans, or heat treated vegetables, custard bakery items, and even cream puffs. Two of the most important factors in keeping food safe, and the ones that you have the most influence over, are again, time and temperature. Time means the amount of time that the food is held in the temperature danger zone. Temperature means the internal, or inside, temperature of the food, especially when the temperature is within the danger zone. The temperature danger zone is between 41 degrees Fahrenheit, or 5 degrees Celsius, and 135 degrees Fahrenheit, or 57 degrees Celsius. In this range, pathogens multiply rapidly. It's your job to minimize the time TCS foods and ready-to-eat foods spend in the danger zone. Do not keep TCS foods and ready-to-eat foods in the danger zone for more than four hours. Generally speaking, the danger zone is a pretty bad place for food to be. Cold TCS foods need to be at 41 degrees Fahrenheit or 5 degrees Celsius or colder. Hot TCS foods should be 135 degrees Fahrenheit or 57 degrees Celsius or warmer. Check the internal temperature and case temperatures in your department on a regular schedule. Ideally, check every two hours so there might be some time to take corrective action like reheating or chilling the food. Also, Make sure your refrigerated or hot holding equipment isn't overloaded. Monitoring time and temperature is critical. So is cross-contamination prevention. Cross-contamination is when pathogens from one product are transferred to another. This happens when raw products come in contact with ready-to-eat products or when equipment or a food handler transfers pathogens between products. Watch how easily pathogens can start out on a food like raw chicken and quickly spread throughout the department. Cross-contamination can occur when work surfaces and equipment are not properly cleaned and sanitized when switching between TCS foods and ready-to-eat foods. For example, if a knife and cutting board are used for cutting raw chicken to prepare for a recipe, and that same equipment is next used to trim mold off of cheese without properly cleaning and sanitizing, pathogens in the fluids from the chicken may be transferred to the cheese. Another potential source of cross-contamination is you. When workers fail to practice good personal hygiene, they can transfer pathogens from one product to another. Dirty gloves, hands, clothes, and bodies are all potential cross-contaminators. To minimize cross-contamination, store raw foods separately from ready-to-eat foods. Always clean and sanitize work surfaces, cutting boards, utensils, and equipment when switching between products. Ideally, use designated cutting boards and utensils for various product types. Practice good personal hygiene. Wash your hands, change your gloves, and switch to a clean apron or uniform as needed. While we can't see germs, we know a lot about what they like and what they don't like. Knowing the proper conditions where germs thrive is the first step in making sure your store doesn't become contaminated. If you do your job, it'll make it a lot harder for pathogens to do their dirty work.